Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Lincoln Electric's 90i FC. It's a flux core only machine and it is the upgraded version of the Century FC90. If you didn't know, the welder manufacturer Century is owned by Lincoln Electric and this is a very similar machine but it's definitely got some upgrades. We're gonna talk about a few of those upgrades and then uh, we are here in the Tinder box because I'm kind of temporarily moved out of the uh, 8x20 shipping container that I have that I traditionally have done my welding videos in the last few months, actually the last couple of years. I, a lot of my welding equipment's behind me, I, I had to move out of it temporarily. So should be all right just to do a couple short welds here on the welding table and uh, talk a little bit about this machine, some of the upgrades over the FC90 and uh, just do kind of a quick overview. If you feel like this video helped you out, and you do want to pick up this machine, go down to the description below. There will be an affiliate link there on Amazon where you can purchase it and have it shipped to your door at no extra cost to you. It just helps out the channel a little bit. Nice, easy way to support the channel without spending any of your own money um, other than just buying something you're already going to buy. So make sure you use that link in the description below. Let's move on with the review. So here's the new MIG gun that they include with this machine. Um, obviously MIG is metal inert gas and this is a flux core only machine. You can tell by the flux core nozzle on here, it doesn't have a gas nozzle. It has a 35 thousandths tip in here and I believe they send you a 30 thousandths tip. I like the thread on nozzle style that they have here and I like that they have just the flux core nozzle on there. Gives you a little bit better visibility uh, over your workpiece and what you're doing when you're just flux core welding over the uh, much wider gas nozzle. They also have a hook that is an upgrade over the Century FC90. And then there's a more ergonomic curved gun, although I didn't mind the gun on the FC90. It was maybe just a little bit thinner, maybe felt a little bit cheaper. This looks very similar to the one that I have on my Forney and uh, it's probably a, a better quality MIG gun just from the feel of it, you know, the, the heft and the weight in it, not that it's super heavy or anything. You know, it's been a couple of years since I sold off my FC90, but I suspect this is probably about the same length of cable. Um, being that it's upgraded, I'm, I'm sure that if it's anything, it's a little bit longer, but it looks to be about the same size, like a six foot cable, if I remember right. Definitely not super long, but good for a little starter machine. Yeah, I'd probably call that about six feet. <clears throat> All right, here on the back is definitely a much heavier duty, much thicker uh, power input or plug wire. And then, I don't know, this is probably maybe roughly the same quality of plug, but the wire itself, probably at least twice as thick as the FC90. And as far as the external parts go, this is the last uh, much better ground clamp. It has this braided, braided copper wire here inside of the ground clamp, giving you a better connection on both sides. The uh, other ground clamp with the Century model, Definitely a much cheaper ground clamp. Um, as far as the cable goes, probably about the same. I don't know, it could be made out of a little bit better material, at least the insulation. I actually think, yeah, this is probably a little bit more flexible insulation than what's on the FC90. Of course, it's been a little while since I've used it, so I, I could be remembering wrong. And yeah, that should do it for external parts from the rest of the machine. Let's move into the machine itself. From the control panel on back, or the face plate, whatever you want to call it, definitely looks to be pretty much exactly the same, feels very much the same. But the controls and, and everything up here is probably a little bit upgraded. Number one, just aesthetically, you know, you have dual colors, Lincoln Electric branding, a little bit nicer looking front. One of the big upgrades for sure is uh, bigger knobs and definitely higher quality filling knobs with, with a little bit bigger setting numbers for you to see. And also this face plate here is tilted just a little bit back so that you can see uh, the controls and the numbers in your settings where I believe on the Century FC90, it was just pretty flat. Although this could be tilted back maybe a little bit more. Uh, for better viewing. Possibly an upgraded spool holder. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much better it really is. It has the same plastic wire feed mechanism. Maybe, I mean, it could be slightly different for all I know, um, but nothing wrong with them. I often talk about the upgraded, you know, cast aluminum and stamped stainless steel sheet metal that goes onto some of the other machines, uh, wire drive mechanisms that is, that goes into some of the other machines. Um, but that doesn't mean that the plastic ones are bad. I've had several machines with the plastic wire drive mechanisms that I've not had any issues with them. So you have a removable drive wheel here, adjustable uh, knob for pressure on the wire, and uh, you have a 35 thousandths and a 30 thousandths knurled uh, wheel for pushing flux core wire. Here on the inside of the lid is probably a little bit nicer chart, setting chart and setup instructions 
being that this is kind of more for a DIY welder, which that's what I am. I've never been to welding school or anything like that. I don't even know what kind of chart the Century had. You know, this one's uh, pretty nice and easy to read. It's tucked up under the top part of this lid. You can look and get some kind of guidelines of where to put your settings if you're not super familiar with the machine. I actually got really pretty proficient, probably more proficient than I've gotten with any other machine with that FC90. Uh, because I used it so much, I didn't really even have to use the setting charts. I'd know the thickness of my material, know my wire size, and I could actually get it dialed in pretty quick on my own because I used it so much. These days I've got so many different machines coming through the shop, I never really get to know them super well. So hopefully this is pretty similar to the FC90 and, and it will be pretty easy to get going. So one thing that you wouldn't know just by looking at this machine that is a big upgrade is it's a, got a one year warranty where the FC, the Century FC90 has a six month warranty. So you get a little bit longer warranty. I believe the gun and the ground clamp have like a 90 day warranty or something like that on them. But the machine itself, you're getting one year out of which is better than a lot of inexpensive machines. And you know, you've got a good company like Lincoln Electric backing that up. I think that puts us about at uh, loading up a Lincoln Electric spool of wire. I think we're going to be doing 35,000s flux core. Obviously, it has to be flux core since this is a flux core only machine. And uh, we'll just weld a little bit of eight, eighth inch plate, T joints, little fillet welds, and uh, call it good for the initial review on this thing. Get this tacked up. <clears throat> so we can run a weld. Whew, probably too high. All right, let's just go to the settings here since I'm unfamiliar with the machine and see what the suggestion is. So we're doing eighth inch with 35 thousandths wire. Lincoln Electric Inner Shield, uh, 35 thousandths wire. Says wire feed speed on 10 and volts on six. Hopefully that's not too high and going to trip my breaker. I think that definitely is a little bit different settings from the FC90 that I remember. Yes, it's a small weld, should serve the purpose. I'm more of a long-term review guy. Uh, I get a lot of use in it, but I think, uh, you know, just doing some short little welds here. Let's do it from the side so you can see better. I think uh, doing some short little welds here rather than a lot, kind of a less is more situation. So I think that angle is a little bit different than the, the Forney one I have. Maybe it's just because I'm used to another angle. It just feels strange. I wondered if we'd do that. All right, looks like it's turning out really, really nice so far. I did burn through a little bit and just to avoid the power shutting off. And just so you know, if you're watching this as a new uh, welder, this kick in the breaker is not the fault of the machine whatsoever. I thought I, I've got a 20 amp breaker in here, but the lights are running off of it also. I wanted to have a dedicated welding uh, welder breaker. In my experience, I'd have to go up to probably 25 amps uh, with obviously a thicker gauge uh, wire here. So I, I can avoid tripping. Every machine I've ever used uh, with this electrical setup has, has tripped a breaker. So I'm gonna try and finish this one out. I'm afraid, I don't know, stopping and starting, I'm not really bad at, but the new machine, I'm you know, who knows how it's gonna change things. So I'm gonna try and finish this out and then I'll probably try and run one, one more beat on the other side. But it looks like it's turning out really, really nice so far. Yeah, that definitely changed the way this is gonna look big time, that adjustment. We'll clean it off, take a look at it. All right, it's still pretty hot, but here, here's what we have. Hopefully the uh, camera will focus in on this, but uh, really, really nice 
you know, where I first started my start, but it's definitely uh, laying nice and flat. Might be a little bit too tall of a weld. I don't know. You know, I'm not building skyscrapers or anything. I'm just putting together fences and little tools and doing little repairs here and things like that here and there. So another one of those cases where the uh, machine could probably out weld me. We'll run one more bead on this backside where it is bent over a little bit, this uh, this top part, but we'll, we'll go ahead and see how it looks and uh, just run one more bead. All right guys, while I'm making this last weld here, I realized an error I made uh, when filming this video. I, I never talked about the max output difference between the Century FC90 and the Lincoln Electric uh, 90i FC. So the big difference in the mac in the output is the max output. I believe that the FC90 maxed out at 90 amps, where this machine, the Lincoln Electric machine, will max out at about 120 amps. So you have a higher output range in the uh, Lincoln Electric version over the Century, and the Century and the Lincoln Electric do have roughly the same uh, duty cycle, about 30% at 90 amps. Whew, good old flux core, really hot. All right, this time we did make it through that whole weld without tripping the breaker, so it's it's definitely my electrical setup here. It is not the machine. I turned the settings down a little bit, just a hair, just to try and avoid that from happening again. Looks like it worked out just fine. I'm gonna let that cool down for a little bit. I'll clean it, and then I'll bring it in a little bit closer, and we'll, we'll wrap up my, fi my final thoughts here. All right, probably not as nice as the first one, but uh, still a decent looking weld. I was running a little bit low, a little bit flat on the bottom piece. I brought it, tried to correct it and bring it up a little bit midway through. And I think I finished off okay. You know, probably could have uh, ended a little bit nicer here. So it wasn't this, you know, melted cut of metal taken out. But I think this machine welds really, really nicely. Uh, very, very smooth, really smooth arc. Definitely like the Century FC90 in that way. But with absolutely some upgraded features. No doubt better than the Century FC90, which was also a great machine. If you guys don't, if you haven't been following my channel, I sold that thing about uh, two years ago and I ran it for about four years. Uh, probably two to three of those years being just strictly the only machine I used. Uh, no, I did wind up getting the Forney somewhere in there and used it quite a bit and made it more my main machine. But for probably at least three-ish years, I had run that machine pretty much exclusively and, uh, you know, great machine. I, I didn't get rid of it because of any problems. I just kind of had a lot of machines and uh, quite a few flux more core machines. And I was getting ready to move out of my old shop and I just decided that I needed to get rid of maybe a, a couple of machines. And I figured that the Century being a name brand machine would fetch the highest price. And so that's why I wound up sold, selling that one. Final thoughts. One thing I'm noticing is that the fan stays on just like the Century. But I feel like it might be a little bit quieter. Anyway, it's going to be really nice to have a good high quality little flux core machine around the shop again. Pretty happy about it. Thanks everybody for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't already. Make sure if you're not a subscriber, you go down and click subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.